mentioned um, about probiotics, are the, the, the friendly ba bacteria, the, the friendly bugs, official species of bacteria, and we effectively isolate them, take them out, the mechanism of, of how they really have their effect from a, from a simplistic point of view is that simply because you are putting them back in much higher numbers, you're providing, if you like, the population um, uh, uh, consistently providing, if you like, a, 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 a pressure to alter the, the dynamics of the population to raise the ratio of the beneficial types within the individual who's taken the probiotic within their um, individual flora. Why would we need to take supplements containing probiotics? Um, that's an interesting question. I mean, one of the things is, is that a lot of people ask me is, um, do we need to take them and when do we need to take, take them? I think we're getting to the point where there are certain circumstances where um, the evidence for probiotics and for the benefits of probiotics are overwhelming. Um, uh, probably the most important one is um, with antibiotics. So antibiotics are known to have a very negative effect on the balance of this very important microflora that, that, uh, that we have in our GI tract. And what it tends to be the case is that, that, that what the, the, the antibiotics don't produce a, a beneficial imbalance in our flora, they, they produce a negative imbalance in our, in our, in our flora. So there's overgrowth by a number of, of, of um, potentially pathogenic organisms that can cause us all sorts of issues. And we know that antibiotic associated diarrhea where we have where we get diarrhea which is associated with the use of antibiotics we know that we can get yeast overgrowth so candida albicans overgrowth occurs the use of antibiotics particularly in females um, and we now are associating a lot of irritable bowel syndrome so um, with the use of antibiotics it may not be that, that you see the irritable bowel syndrome symptoms you know directly after taking the antibiotics but but that so but those symptoms may develop anywhere from six to three months after the use of, of the antibiotics, where the link between the antibiotic and the onset of the IBS symptoms is then lost. But nevertheless, um, that cause and effect is, is, is still there and becoming more and more apparent now. So the use of antibiotics does have um, some um, uh, negative health effects and probiotics have been shown to be able to um, obviate them. Um, so, for instance, the things I've, that I've just mentioned, antibiotic associated diarrhea, which, which includes Clostridium difficile diarrhea. Uh, probiotics have been shown to uh, decrease the incidence of antibiotic associated diarrhea um, uh, significantly over a, a many, many, many trials. Similarly, um, IBS, there's been a number of, of, of trials and there's one that was done a couple of years ago um, using the, the uh, product Proven, um, which showed a, a significant de decrease in, in all of the symptoms associated with irritable bowel syndrome in people who were diagnosed as, as suffering from, from IBS. Um, uh, dramatic effects. So, so what we can see is that, is that um, uh, already that, 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 that uh, probiotics should absolutely be taken alongside antibiotics. Probiotics should be taken by anybody who's got IBS or IBS type symptoms. And the IBS, an IBS is, is a syndrome, which means that you can't really measure it. It's not a disease as such. You can't take a take blood sample and measure a marker for irritable bowel syndrome, but it's still there. Things that we that we associate with IBS, the symptoms of, of pain, of, um, and it can be severe or more mild, it can be frequent or, or less frequent. Um, you have bloating, which is a very common one, and you have, a, if you like, dissatisfaction with bowel habits. So what you tend to have is either diarrhea or constipation or oscillating both. Um, and the whole... Um, uh, result of this is that IBS can be, from a social point of view, can be distressing and um, uh, debilitating from, from, from a social point of view, so, um, and from an individual point of view as well. So probiotics, very, very effective there. The other area that, that 
that probiotics have been being seen as being very effective is um, uh, in modulating the immune system. And um, we've there are trials we've done whereby what we've shown is that we can by giving probiotics to newborn babies, and that um, gives another clue. Probiotics are completely safe, totally safe. Um, otherwise, you'd never be able to get authorization to give them to newborn ba babies, newborn healthy babies. What we've shown is that by giving to newborn healthy babies, we can steer um, those babies away from becoming allergic. So um, and in the trials which we, we, which we looked at, in terms of the first symptoms of allergy being atopic eczema, so allergic eczema, we decreased the incidence of allergic eczema um, in two-year-old babies or two-year-old two children by 50% by the use of um, probiotics just after birth. Um, similarly, we, we're just producing another trial and, and it's it's supporting uh, work that's, that's been done globally where we've done trial with, with um, children in four and six years of age. And what we've shown is that upper respiratory tract infections, things like colds and flu effectively, um, uh, can be significantly decreased by the use of uh, probiotics. So in these kids, what in fact happened, uh, we gave these uh, children the uh, probiotic throughout the winter and we measured symptoms such as um, uh, sneezing, sore throat, runny nose, cough, um, fever and we also measured uh, medication, how much time they, they need a cough uh, syrup and how many times they needed antibiotics um, and, and also absence from preschool. So what we found was that in terms of the Intensity of, let's say, colds and flu, that was reduced by 50%. Incidence, how many times over six months they got colds and flu, that was reduced by 30%. And we've got 30% decrease in their absence from, from preschool. So it's a very practical way of actually expressing the effect. So that's a more generic effect in terms of the immune uh, mo modulating effect that probiotics have, but I think it's a very effective trial. Um, and a very interesting trial. So, um, so yes, gut effects in terms of, of probiotics, um, immune effects we're seeing now, but there's also um, uh, probiotics, there's a lot of interest in probiotics currently, and, it, and it's because the more that we look, the more that we see. So we're, we're beginning to see that um, probiotics can be effective in terms of relieving stress, for instance. We're also seeing, just like with, from a, from a Omega-3 point of view, that probiotics or a, a microflora, there seems to be a certain type of pattern of, of microflora that is associated with obesity, a certain pattern of microflora that's associated with leanness. And that if we change the microflora, there's a potential to be able to change that person from being lean to obese or obese to lean. Obviously, we don't want to change people to being from lean to obese, but the other way around, um, if we can do that, then um, uh, that would be very, very helpful. So, so a lot of interest in in what probiotics might be able to do in the future. Uh, there's a lot of um, probiotic drinks and yogurts and things on the market now. Why would you take a capsule instead of a drink, or why would you, in fact, take a drink instead of a capsule? Yeah, I mean, I think the the, the, the the probiotic marketplace can be divided into into two major areas. I mean, there, there's big food companies um, who have a big interest in probiotics now, and and um, and the little drink type of products, um, uh, uh, which everybody knows are out there, and they're they're available in all of the supermarkets. Um, these are effectively probiotic. Uh, they, they, they they may look like a, a yogurt drink, but they're, then that they aren't. I mean, they're, they're simply a carrier for the probiotic organisms, and so, so they're a very palatable carrier, and and you know, and they're they are legitimate pro products. So 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 they they, um, and there's some good scientific evidence um, alongside some of them. So um, they are uh, uh, credible, um, and 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 good products. Um, then we've got the other part of the marketplace is the, is the supplement part of the marketplace. And, 
and and there uh, uh, um, there are some very good 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 products as well. And there's unfortunately there's there's maybe some that that are not so good. Um, the acid test in terms of um, uh, selecting any probiotic, whether it's from the from the food industry, from the from the drinks type of thing, or from the supplement industry, is whether that particular probiotic has got um, published clinical evidence of effectiveness. That's the real acid test. Um, and so my advice would be, it doesn't really matter whether you're going from it for a little drink form or you're going for a, you know, a capsule or a supplement form. Look for the look for a product that's got that's got demonstrable evidence of effect. And there are products out there like like that. Um, look for ask the person you're buying from um, whether they uh, uh, whether there's clinical trial information about them whether it's been published um, this is the important thing rather than if you like whether it's from a capsule or whether or whether it's from, from a, a drink when it comes down to as I say um, drinks versus capsules um, it's a matter of just personal choice then but the choice shouldn't be a matter of uh, uh, um, from a palatability point of view, it should be: Is this product has this product been shown to uh, be to be effective? And does it make a difference when you're looking for a probiotic which strains are contained in the probiotic, and also how many of them are in the capsule? Okay. Um, again, it comes back to the same thing: the strains don't really matter. Um, it's whether those strains are effective. So. Um, uh, again, look for it, whether it's one strain or five strains or fifty strains. Look at whether the product has got clinical evidence of effectiveness. Um, uh, if it has, then by implication, those strains must be effective. So I can I don't need to say anything more about them than the fact that in, that in um, double-blinded human clinical trials have been published. These strains or mixture of strains. Have been shown to be effective, and that's all that you need to know. That's all I need to know. Um, so, and and when it comes down to counts, yes, I think counts generally are important. Again, same thing that if it's been shown to be effective in clinical trials, then that's the acid test. Typically, most um, clinical trials now, um, uh, the effective dosage doesn't matter what what what. What the probiotic is and what the strains are, the effective doses tends to be between five and fifty billion. Um, but again, the important thing is look for the um, uh, look for the evidence. From our point of view, for instance, all of our trials um, have been done on a daily dose. All of our adult trials have been done on, on a daily dose of twenty-five billion, and the products which we, which we make in the um, uh, proven range, for instance, are all based. On a central position um, of, uh, of providing that 25 billion dosage. And for non-therapeutic dose, just as a the non-therapeutic dose, of, if it's if it's top up, you know, it's a um, uh, it's a high level maintenance, somewhere between the six and ten billion mark is fine.